I'm Anil Kumar and now let us understand how to sketch a reciprocal function from graph when there are no x-intercepts for the function. So in part 2 we are discussing the case when we have a function f of x with no x-intercepts. In part 1 we considered function with x-intercepts and we took two types of x-intercepts, linear and quadratic, right? Now let us consider a case where we have a function without any x-intercepts. Well, two examples are very common and let's look into both these examples. So here is the, these two examples. So what I'll draw, I'll draw the functions here and then we'll consider their reciprocal. One, we should consider exponential functions. So we have exponential function kind of like this. Let us say it is 2 to the power of x. On the other side, I'll take a quadratic function. And now this time, let me take a quadratic function which is opening downwards. Okay, so that's the quadratic function. To help us sketch, we'll put some values. So we have x-axis here our function f of x, well this function, let's call this g of x, and this is x values. And let's say this g of x is equals to 2 to the power of x. And f of x, let us say that f of x is equals to, since it's opening downwards, we'll write minus x square, and let us consider this point to be half. So we'll say minus half. Okay, so that is our function f of x. Well, important thing here is that both these functions do not have x-intercept. So that means what? It simply means that domain is all real numbers. x belongs to real numbers. So this is kind of very important. Some students think that for a reciprocal function, there's always a restriction on domain since they expect a vertical asymptote. Well, in these examples, there are no vertical asymptotes. That's kind of very important, the first part. Second thing what we notice here is that in this particular case, the function is positive. So this is, I'm writing domain, all real numbers. It's for both function and the reciprocal function, right? But let me focus on the reciprocal function. So we'll say we're talking about the reciprocal function r of x, which is equals to 1 over g of x. So in that case, reciprocal function will not have any restrictions on domain, just as the function itself in this particular case. How about the range? So range should be what? Now, since the function is positive, the reciprocal will always be positive. So y belongs to real numbers, where y will be greater than 0. As you know, in a reciprocal function, 1 over something, y is never equal to 0. In fact, horizontal asymptote is y equals to 0, right? So that's a common property, right? So let me write down here, horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals to 0. So we do not have any vertical asymptote in both the examples, but we do have horizontal asymptote. In this particular case, as you can see, what is the range? Since the function is negative, range is going to be less than 0, correct? So in this case, we know range for a reciprocal function, right, is going to be y belongs to real numbers, so that y is less than 0, since the function is negative. Okay, now let's try to draw the reciprocal of these functions. So here, as we see, the function is approaching, as x approaches infinity, negative value, function approaches zero. So if function is approaching zero, the reciprocal will approach infinity, right? So we kind of have a graph which should be approaching infinity for the reciprocal function. So in green, I'm sketching the reciprocal function. Two to the power of zero has to be one, right? Anything to the power of zero is one, and therefore this becomes invariant point, right? So that is going to be common, for both and then if the function is approaching infinity then the reciprocal should approach zero right so that gives you 
our graph. So kind of, we can just join these points, right? So it is kind of a graph like this, a decay function, for example, right? So that becomes R of X, the reciprocal function. So the exponential function with positive exponents, reciprocal as you expect it, will be decay function. So it's kind of a decay function graph. So what I'm trying to say is that the front graph is kind of like this, right, to be more precise. So that is how it is going to be. Now let's look into the second example. Now here, since I've taken the function as minus x squared minus half, this point is minus half. Now reciprocal of minus half will be two, right? So if it is half one, let us say this is two for us. So that becomes the reciprocal of minus half, right? Minus two. So let me write down minus two clearly. Okay, minus 2. Now, going through the properties, if x value is negative, negatively high, then y value is going to be negatively high for this function. So the reciprocal will be negative, but approaching 0. So we're trying to approach 0 in this side, right? Both sides going negative, that means both sides should be approaching 0. Horizontal asymptote, as we saw, is y equals to 0, correct? Now, there will be some point here where the value will be 1. And let us say those are these values. So this is half. Let's say these are the values where the function is 1, right? So this point is for 1. So if we have to sketch this as an invariant point common to both the functions, correct? So if these are common, and then we have a graph which is kind of like this, opposite bell type. So that is how our graph is going to look like. So that is the graph of the reciprocal of a function when we have inverted parabola without any x-intercepts. Do you see that? Right? So it'll be kind of symmetric, not so neatly drawn, but I think you get an idea. Right? So what we notice here is that if the function is not having any x-intercepts, then its reciprocal will not have vertical asymptotes. That is one thing. And second thing which you can see here is that the reciprocal is not like 1 over x. The reciprocal graph is kind of different from 1 over x graph. Right? So these are the two things which you should definitely take care of. So when you have x-intercepts for the function, then on either side, the graph of reciprocal is kind of 1 over x graph. But in cases where you do not have x-intercepts for the function, we will not be having any vertical asymptotes. And the graph will be that the increasing intervals becomes decreasing intervals, and the decreasing intervals becomes increasing intervals. So in this case, the critical thing which you need to know is whether the interval of increasing or decreasing. Here what we notice is that the f of x is always increasing. So R of X, the reciprocal, is always decreasing. So this is kind of very important. In this particular function, we find that half the interval, this interval, what happens in this? Here, F of X, the rate of change is increasing. Do you see that? So in half the interval, the reciprocal function will be decreasing. So that goes in a positive. Now in this half, let me write it in a different ink. In this half, however, we find that the function f of x is decreasing, right? So in this half, what we will notice is that the reciprocal is increasing. So in this case, the reciprocal is increasing. So that is what it is. So increasing and decreasing interval become very critical when you're sketching reciprocal of a function, right? It is critical in both the cases, but here the sh shape is dependent on that. So the shape is not really like 1 over x. That's kind of important to know. I hope you've taken care of these points and let's move forward and look into more reciprocal and rational functions graph. Thank you and all the best.